Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Christian Gonzalez. This is episode four of Heal Thyself. Three episodes down. We talked about a lot. We went into detail about a lot. And here's a beautiful thing. I have been getting such good response from everyone. So I thank you all for listening, tuning in, and uh, and watching. And I hope that uh, this is really informative for you. So we're going to go into it. This is going to be a really, really good show. I have a bomb knowledge bomb. And uh, we're going to really dive deep into something that especially women are exposing themselves to every single day. We're going to go, we're going to do a product review that's going to be talking about and expanding on the knowledge bomb. And boy, our guest is one of my favorite. It's going to be a really good uh, show, really good interview. So uh, yeah, stay tuned and uh, get ready for a really good one. All right, everyone. Welcome to today's knowledge bomb segment. This is really going to be a good one. Here's why. Every single time I touch or talk about the topic of tampons, there's a tidal wave of response. Surprisingly, because I think that we should be more educated as people on tampons, especially women using these tampons. Why? Over 11,400 tampons are used over 2,200 days of a woman's life. The problem is, is that the vaginal canal is very, very permeable. It's like a sponge. It sucks up everything. We know that. So why isn't anyone talking more about tampons? All right. So here is the first issue with tampon regulation. The FDA lists tampon as medical devices. So what that means is it doesn't have to follow chemical regulations like the food industry the drug industry, even the cosmetics industry. With that said, the testing that is done on these tampons, the majority of the time are done by the company itself. Already, this should raise a red flag. Because let's say, let's say my name's William the Weasel and I'm making cakes in my basement and then putting them out to the public. Wouldn't you want to know what the ingredients are, first and foremost? And wouldn't you want to know if there's someone else overseeing the safety of these ingredients? Because if I'm putting out to the public and you're ingesting it, you want to make sure you know what's going in your body. Well, with that said, the FDA doesn't necessarily even, I mean, the FDA, the, the, the Tampax manufacturers don't necessarily have to even disclose the ingredients or the full list of ingredients. And on top of that, they're testing it for themselves. Big red flag already. All right, let's move on. So... Here are the major issues or the major ingredients that we're looking for when we search for tampons. And by we, I mean us empowered women. Uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, for women, this is what I want you to be searching for. Okay, so cotton is a major, major component of tampons. The problem is if you listen to uh, show number two, I spoke about the importance of avoiding conventional cotton because of glyphosate. It's not the only toxin in cotton, but it's a big one. And that can cause many, many issues. It's extremely hazardous to your health. Uh, and cotton is considered actually the dirtiest crop out there. And over 95% of cotton has glyphosate, conventional cotton. Uh, so that's connected, as I mentioned, to multiple diseases and disruptions. And uh, what they found was about seven out of 10 of the toxins used in the cotton uh, are found to be moderately to highly hazardous to your health. This is by the World Health Organization. So again, let's do another. I, I'm a visual guy. I need to learn by visualization. So uh, imagine you're in a field of cotton and you have a sundress on and the sun is hitting you and it's a beautiful uh, dreamy sequence in your, in your head. And now imagine a cloud comes over and some person in a hazmat suit with boots comes in and starts spraying glyphosate all over this beautiful cotton field that you're running on so happily. Well, would you take that cotton and insert it into your vagina because that's essentially what's happening. There are doused in glyphosate and other toxins, dried, and then we're putting them, women, into, into the, the vagina, the permeable vagina. So it's sucking up all these toxins. This is the first issue 
with cotton because that's that's pretty much the vision that I had, right? Spraying glyphosate right into the cotton and then them being made into tampons, which are used monthly. All right. What about the other stuff? Well, polyester is a major ingredient that is found there too. That's derived from petro uh, petroleum, crude oil, uh, which we know is dirty, has pesticides, is nasty, can, it, can potentially have heavy metals. The other big one is this. When rayon is produced, it's made from wood pulp. And that wood pulp is bleached. Used to be with chlorine, but it's still bleached. I don't use chlorine anymore, but it's still bleached. And rayon is produced. The issue is there's a toxic byproduct that's made called dioxin. Dioxin is a byproduct that I always talk about, even outside of this, because it's all over. It's in our environment, it's heavily in our food, and then it's in the tampons. So I'm gonna go a little bit into dioxin, but dioxin is a really nasty one. We also see some absorb, uh, absorbency enhancers, um, and we see some fragrances, deodorants, and the big issue with fragrances is this. You can say fragrance, but it's an umbrella term for it can be up to a thousand different chemicals. So if you see the word fragrance, let's even take a step out of tampons. Anywhere else in your personal care products, that's a big red flag. You don't want something to say fragrance because that's ambiguous for potentially a thousand different chemicals. All right, back to dioxin. Dioxin is something that I have spoke about in the past. I continue to speak about because it is considered uh, next to glyphosate, one of the most dangerous chemicals out there one of the most dangerous chemicals in existence. The EPA says there's no safe level of dioxin, all right? So back in 2002, the tactics for bleaching tampons reduced, uh, well, they changed, they, they don't use chlorine anymore, but the, dioxins level, the dioxin levels in tampons were greatly reduced, all right? Now, uh, regulating bodies say that there's no, uh, or there's very negligible amounts of dioxin in tampons. But one of the world's leading experts, his name is Philip Tierno, and he's out in NYU. He said this, although it has trace amounts, we have to think about the additive effect throughout our lifetime. Remember, I went, let's go back. I said women use over 11,400 tampons in their lives. Let's think about the additive effect of monthly exposures to dioxin in an extremely permeable place, not even considering synergistically what all of these toxins do and how they work off of each other. We're not just isolating dioxin, but we know dioxin is a really nasty one. Couple that with our exposures to environment and food, this is a big issue. Why? Because dioxin is connected to immune disruption, immune suppression, women, pelvic inflammatory disease, endometriosis, miscarriages, infertility, diabetes, birth defects, breast cancer, reproductive cancer. This is why it's considered one of the nastiest toxins out there because we know what it does. It's still out there. It's in the tampons. So let's be more diligent about the way we're purchasing tampons and what we're doing with them. All right. And then I mentioned glyphosate. We know that it's a probable carcinogen, probably causes cancer. Different regulating bodies say that, although Monsanto did their best job to hide that. But um, yeah, probably causes cancer, hormone disrupting, disrupts your detox pathways, disrupts your gut bacteria, disrupts your nerves, is inflammatory, and they're found in 85% of tampons. This was by a study in uh, Argentina. Argentina found 85% of tampons had glyphosate. So I want everyone to understand that one of the major toxic exposures that people, or women, are exposed to is tampons, and that if you understand the way these companies uh, police themselves, put out, don't disclose all their ingredients, do their own testing, I think that should build on our awareness to make an informed decision. This is, remember, informed consent. So I hope now that you're empowered enough to have the, the information that you need to make a decision to um, change your purchasing and you know, vote with your dollar buy something, buy, buy tampons that are better quality, which I will be going into right now. All right, everyone, today's product review naturally will be flowing into tampons. So after work yesterday, I went to the supermarket and bought some tampons. Um, before I get into it, I wanna make a little note. 
These product reviews will uh, be speaking about products that are readily accessible. So ones you're going to be able to find at Whole Foods, maybe Target, maybe Costco. I want it to be where people can find them, purchase them, and go home. With that said, there's a lot of really good products out there that can be purchased online too. So I'm going to mention some of them, um, but the ones that I have at hand are the ones that um, you can drive to the store and purchase. And that goes for all product reviews. Anyway, we're going to start naturally. I always go with my least favorite and build up to the best because I just need to get that negative energy out of here. All right, so Tampax, Tampax, Tampax. This is obviously my least favorite. And look, it could have been Playtex, Kotex, any of these. But as I mentioned in the Knowledge Bomb segment, that these regulate their own ingredients, don't necessarily disclose all of them, although they do put some ingredients, maybe to, maybe to their dismay because I'm about to review them. But, um, but yeah, this is, this is something that we need to discuss. So the, one of the first ingredients you'll see is cotton already is the red flag, right? We know that it has glyphosate. We know that it's one of the dirtiest crops. We know that it has other toxins. Um, so there you go, non-organic cotton. We know the second ingredient is rayon. Remember what I just said about dioxin. We can guarantee that this has both glyphosate and dioxin, two of the nastiest toxins that are out there that women are putting into their vagina. So in the industry, there's something called fiber loss. And we know that with rayon, it has the tendency to shed into the vagina. So why would anyone ever want to shed one of the most toxic toxins into the vagina? That is a big concern, all right? What else does it have that has polyester? We spoke about that with the crude oil. Um, we don't know how it is uh, sourced, but I can almost guarantee that Tampax isn't responsibly sourcing their polyester. And then two of the last ones is this, this is ones I wanna talk about actually, propylene uh, and polyethylene. These are plastic polymers. And th th they say that the propylene itself is, is more resistant towards leaching plastic. I'm gonna do a whole show about plastic, but what, what plastic does in the body is it mimics estrogen. It's called a xenoestrogen. So for men and women, it can really disrupt our hormones, start promoting proliferation of cancerous cells, um, predisposing men to prostate cancer and women towards breast cancer, and then all of us to different other hor hormonal cancers. So plastic is not a good thing. It's in this in those forms. And then this is the unscented one, but we know that there are scented uh, tampons. And remember what I said about fragrance then, that opens up the umbrella term about it, right? It can be thousands of different chemicals that, uh, that reflect what's going on with this fragrance part. So when you go on the website of Tampax, there's a little safety section. And there's a quote that says, we care about your safety. We use reliable materials that are extensively tested. I said, by who, Mr. Magoo? This is ridiculous. Like, who is testing this? Because I know with, there's no certifications here. There's nothing that I know about Tampax that is telling me that I can even trust this company. I can't even give an, any other analogy about what to do other than just throw this away. Like, please don't ever use Tampax. They might come after me for that one. Anyway. Let's go to my favorite. Let's go to one of my favorite. And, and this goes back to the part where I said, readily accessible. I bought this one at Whole Foods, but there are some really other good ones that I'll mention that are out there um, that weren't at Whole Foods or over here we have Sprouts and, um, and Air One. So, so Nature Care. Nature Care is my favorite readily accessible one. Um, and here's why. Nature Care does their due diligence, right? Because it actually was the first tampon that was made organic with certified organic cotton. And they did it in response because of things like Tampax, what they're doing, right? They're putting out, particularly because of dioxin and glyphosate. Uh, that's why it was made. So this company itself, what they do is their, their tampons are made of 100% organic cotton. Great. Like, just just them saying that, okay. Obviously, I'm going to need a little certification because, you know, anyone can say that. But they say 100% organic cotton. So that's telling me already that there's no glyphosate, 
right? And we also, again, cotton's a very dirty crop, no other chemicals in it. And they go, they go two steps extra. They have something called the Soil Association Organic. That's a stamp in Europe that shows that farms are organic and the foods they produce or the products they produce are organic. It's sort of like the USDA organic label. In essence, we can say they, they reflect each other a lot. But what that's doing is ensuring us that the cotton in here that's being produced is organic. But then they go one step further. And here is something, regardless of nature care or any other tampon, that we need to keep an eye on. Um, it had, there's a certification called the GOTS certification, Global Organic Textile Standard Certification. And what that tells us, it's a governing body that tells us that, and it's actually on the bottom side of this one here, that tells us that organic uh, cotton is used from seed all the way to the stitching. And it's 95% organic. So again, no, nothing's ever perfect in this industry, but it's the best one. On top of that, it ensures that it's ethically grown. Um, there's no metals, there's no other pollutants, other solvents and other nasties in there. Um, so you want you want your things to be GOT certified. And this actually moves over to even blankets or beds or bedding. Um, anything that's really using cotton heavy materials, you want it to be GOTS certified. It's a little round guy with, with a green color. Additionally, Nature Care doesn't use um, perfumes. Remember the fragrance umbrella? Uh, chlorine, no plastic. So this is really good. This is encouraging. This is how tampons should be made. I like this one in particular because the applicator is not plastic. There are some other really good ones and they have, but they have plastic applicators. How much it matters, I don't know. When, when, when you're just inserting the tampon and it's not, the applicator's not staying in there, of course not. Um, maybe it doesn't make that much of a difference, but this one uses actually a biodegradable uh, applicator and um, there's no plastic basically, which is good. Um, Nature Care also makes pads. If, if, if some women are more, um, are leaning more towards pads, that's, that's fine too. They use uh, no fragrances, no dyes, no perfumes. Um, the, pa the pads are made of plant starch and they don't use super absorbent, absorbent materials. So, um, Another, it, it's, it's a good company, especially when it comes to tampons. I think they stay only in that industry. I don't, I'm not sure that Nature Care makes anything other, other than pads and tampons. They may or may not. Um, some other inquiries that I've gotten and some other ones that I've heard about are Lola. Lola is a subscription-based tampon delivery company, and they use 100% organic. And much like the Nature Care, they have the they have the certification label that that it's GOT certified, G O T S, and they say they use they have a BPA-free applicator. As a side note, and before you know, I'll go into a whole show on plastic, but BPA-free doesn't really mean anything. It's it's as toxic or even more toxic. But again, you're only using it for application, a short exposure. Um, it's up to you. Another company is Cora, Cora and L dot, L dot. These are two that they, they, I know that they sell at Target because when I did a little series on my Instagram stories, uh, when I was at Target, those were the two that I was leaning over instead of Tampax. Um, so those, those, I really like those, the Cora and the L dot one. Same idea as the Lola one, um, they're using 100% organic, they're both GOT certified. So I don't care what you use. Buy them, try those out, see which one is most comfortable, see which one your body reacts to the best. But I, I care that you all understand what you need to look for. You need to look for a certification, some sort of certification. And, and in the tampon industry, we wanna look for the GOTS, the GOT certification. We wanna know that it's 100% organic. We wanna know that there's no rayon or dioxin byproducts in there. That's, that's what the implication is. We wanna know that there's no plastic in the tampon. The applicator, again, that's, that's up for debate. So, um, and we wanna know that there's no artificial fragrances, that umbrella term for thousands and thousands of different chemicals that can be in there. So uh, be empowered with this understanding and then shop around and see which one you love best. I will do uh, a side note on Diva Cups or the menstrual cups, Diva Cups, a popular one. Um, I guess, so So the FDA says that uh, the silicone is medical grade and it's biocompatible and non-toxic and non-porous and um, can stay uh, in the vagina for long periods. We don't necessarily 
No, I mean, the, what, the jur- what the jury says is it's safe. I'm one to be more conservative because we don't necessarily know how the body reacts to silicon, although it's understandably said to be stable. We, there are some studies that show that um, the breakdown products of silicone, they're called siloxanes, can be um, liberated throughout the blood and can potentially be an endocrine disruptor. So do I approve of Diva Cups? Probably. Um, do I approve of these tampons that, that can be used? Probably more so than the Diva Cups because it's just, a li- I take it with a grain of salt, the Diva Cups or the menstrual cups. I think there's a Diva Cup and the Luna Cup. Um, but they're, they're about 40 bucks. They can be re- reused. And if it works for you, it works for you. Just know that we don't necessarily fully know if the silicone is, um, is safe. All right. That is my take on tampons. Um, I really hope that this was empowering. And you can go now online or to the supermarket and purchase with more information and uh, feel that you're making a decision that is in better alignment with overall health. That is the that is the whole purpose of these product reviews. So, um, yeah, much love, and let's let's bring in our guest. We have a we have a really good guest, and I, I, you know I'm ready to do this. Let's 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 interview her. All right. So for our guest segment, we have one of my favorite people walking this earth. <laughs> <laughs> now, for real, she is awesome, amazing, and has been helping so many people for so long, and changing people's lives. We're going to deep dive into a lot of stuff. But I am so happy to have here with us, Organic Olivia. Hello. I don't, I don't even know where to look. Right? You just this look is very exciting. Wherever you want. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I'm really excited to be here and to also learn from you because I'm always learning something new from your stories and what you're doing for people as well. So it's nice to be able to bounce off of each other. Yeah. I think we, as a community of um, like health educators, we'll say. Yeah are able to feed off of each other. We all have like these awesome specialty strengths, passions. Yes. And now people are like, cause you'll see that they'll, they'll tag and they'll say, these are the people that I love following because yeah. each of us offers these amazing. We fill in the blanks. We're really good at that. Yeah. We're really good at filling in the blanks and all of us have a different piece. And you know, I have a little bit of the Chinese medicine. You have a lot of the integrative oncology yeah. and all of these things that we need to know for prevention. So it's just nice to have a mix because I'm learning more and more, especially as I go through herbalism school and we're studying all these different systems of medicine is that you need to really take what works for you and you can never just go by the book of one system or just because it says this herb is good for this doesn't mean it's going to be good for you. So you really need to have this pool of information to pull from to make the right decisions for your body. Personalizing your herbal medicines now, right? Oh, yes. oh, so yes. all of a sudden it becomes way more complex than you thought it was, yes. right? Because people are present with damp heat oh and God. then, mm. you know, their spleen is this and that. Yes. I can imagine how complex you've been seeing. Yeah, and it, that's it's so funny because I've been thinking about how can I have a system or you know even find a way to manufacture custom formulas for people. I would love to do that one day because as much as I create my formulas for everyone and try to make them as balanced as I possibly can energetically, you know, using some cooling herbs, some heating herbs, some neutrals, it's, it doesn't work for everyone. No herb is ever going to work for everyone. Mm-hmm. So um, what I love in school right now is that I'm starting to practice some of the clinical work. So I'm just practicing on friends and family, doing their intakes, and I'm yeah. customizing their formulas. Yeah. And that is the most magnis- magnificent thing I've ever done because an herb will just remind you of a person or it'll just, you're talking to them and you just have like a Luthero root, a Luthero yeah, root, like yeah. just banging into your yeah. brain because you know that it's right for them and it just fits them energetically. So it's so nice to have something that's just for the person and building a formula. Like we use a triangle method where we start with a nutritive herb and then we go for an herb that resonates with the organ meridian where they're having the issue. And then we go with an herb to round it out. Like if we need a little bit of bitters in there for the liver or whatever. Yeah. So it's just nice to build based on the person. And I will be doing that in my practice, but I would love to do that with my products as well someday. Yeah. It's just so hard to scale personified Ugh. products or food or anything. Yeah. It's just, I've ran into to that issue, like with meal planning and stuff. You can't yeah. scale to a wide audience. So you've got to find a little happy yeah. medium, but yeah. I love that 
you're really personalizing these herbs uh, for your family and friends. Yes. And how crazy is it to see the difference like yes. that, to see how powerful you are? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and it's I especially see it with my boyfriend Nick because he's a person who just gets really depleted really easily. So he can't do all these bitters and all these cleansing herbs. They just make him worse. So with him, it's like the gentle, nutritive, sweet tonics and just pushing those towards him and being gentle with his body is the way that he responds. Whereas someone like me, who's very Kapha and Ayurveda, yeah. I need those lymphagogs. I need those bitters. I need yeah. things to Give me move. the tidal wave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Like give me the strongest herbs you yeah. got. Yeah. Um, and then even my best friend is in the other room. Like she's so sensitive that she takes one drop of CBD and she's like, I'm blasted, bro. Like, <laughs> Isn't it interesting how these doses and formulas resonate with the person's personality too? Yes. Yeah. Right? Or they can help to, to improve their, not their personality, but their mood and their mental well-being. It's yeah. just so interesting when you get the right plant for somebody. And mm-hmm. it's like me with Rose. You know, I, you know my story. I've been working a lot with Rose Medicine before I came here because I've been on a mission the last year to open my heart back up. Mm-hmm. We were talking about this last night. Mm-hmm. Um, I lived in a moldy apartment for almost two years and... Among the many physical effects of mold, I think there are so many more emotional and psychological effects of it. And in many ways, it almost made me afraid of the world and afraid of people because I was isolating myself so much just because that's the the sick behavior that Mm -hmm. we display when we're inflamed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been my mission to open my heart back up and see the world as a safer place And it's interesting because some of the symptoms that I developed when I was in the moldy home are very much autoimmune-esque. Like I was talking about the psoriasis in my nails when I eat dairy. So I I became a little bit more tending towards the TH1 dominance and the autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. And one of my teachers, Richard Mandelbaum, he always says that the energetic piece of autoimmunity is always being afraid of the world, being afraid of the outside world, being afraid of germs or being afraid sure. of people or not being able to trust because yeah. then the body just, it's dysregulated of what is what is safe, what yeah. is of the self, what is other. Yeah. The boundaries are just totally gone. Yeah. So um, my goal with the rose was to really open my heart back up and, you know, just do things like this, like meeting meeting someone that I've always wanted to meet but was maybe a little afraid to, yeah, but yeah. that would really help to kind of soften me and open me up a little bit and, and give me a new experience that yeah. is really loving and wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. And on the other side of it is as you open that part of your heart more, you're attracting more love yes. from people, places, things, situations, circumstances, such that it's facilitating better growth, more growth. Exactly. Perpetuates it. Yeah. Um, little do the listeners and viewers know that um, I was at this amazing store, Air One. <laughs> oh, goodness. And it's a food store, and it's like Whole Foods on steroids oh. plus like the most delicious everything. Treats, juices. Whole Foods doesn't compare. It doesn't compare. It doesn't. And I, I thought Whole Foods was king because I'm yeah. from Yonkers, and we just have one little Whole Foods yeah. and then like one Trader Joe's. It's like 10 miles that way. Yeah. Now that I've been to Air One, it's like, and, I can't go back. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and I was talking yesterday that when people come visit, you know, Maybe years ago, I'd have been like, yo, this is the best bar you need to go to. This is the best club you need to go to. Now I'm like, did you check out Air One? This is the first thing I said to you. I was like, like, have you been? Have you been? Yeah, guys, last night he he went to Air One at what, 9, 10 p.m. and brought me rose water because he knows I've been on my rose medicine kick. And that helped me today. So thank you so much. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And by brought her rose water, we're talking about like a mega big daddy. Oh, yeah, to drink, to to chug. Yeah. Chugging rose water is yeah. my new hobby instead of chugging vodka. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> life changes so fast, right? Not that I right? chugged vodka, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't remember those Just days. Just using the, the bar analogy. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so I think that it's amazing that we can now put so much emphasis on our own health that something like a health food store or a food store that was such good stuff excites us. Yes. Look at the shift in consciousness that's happening. And I think your audience, my audience... This, they would be the same way. They'd yeah. come and they'd be like, oh, this place is amazing. Oh, I met a girl this morning that follows me on Instagram in Erewhon. Mm-hmm. And she's from Florida. And I was like, have you have you come here every day? She goes, oh, no, we came here yesterday three times in one day. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm, was like, me too. Well, I'm lucky enough to live like two blocks from yeah. there. So I'm like, well, I feel like I can maybe like 
get a little bit of more of spring water in my house. So <laughs> I just let me just take, I find every excuse to go there. Yeah, of course. I was like, maybe I need a little chocolate. Yeah. And I'll then you get a little back. exercise, walk the two blocks yeah. and you're good. Yeah. Okay. Just a little pick me up. So you know about the Air One life. That's, that's, it's a California, LA thing. I, I want them to expand everywhere, to be honest. I know. But, um, oh, we could do it with an Air One in New York City yes. for sure. Yes. Oh my for God. Sure. So, um, yeah, that's Air One. But, well, all right, let's talk about this. The Air One podcast. Yeah. <laughs> You sent me um, some products. Yes. Right before my first show here ever, mm -hmm. I woke up and I was coughing. I never have like throat things. I, I'm not, I don't have a weak throat. Yeah. That's not my thing. Yeah. But I was like, why am I coughing? I, I haven't been, it's not one of the manifestations that I get. I use the um, the juice, the the cough one. The herbal tussin yeah. syrup, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. the, the bark, the cherry bark. Yes, exactly. We called it herbal tussin. Herbal tussin, like robotussin. robotussin. Yeah. Sorry, robotussin, don't sue me. So I'm so I'm driving. <laughs> it's a little bit better. So I'm driving and I'm I'm drinking it. I'm like, okay, one, it's good. It uh -huh. tastes good. It does, right? It's yeah. nice and sweet. Kids like it. We have a lot of people who give it to their kids yeah. and they're like, oh, they they're happy to take it. Yeah. <laughs> and I found that when I put it in my mouth and I put my head, uh, my neck back and I, I let it stay on my throat, mm -hmm. it stopped everything. Awesome. I didn't cough once in my first. And I was actually worried that I was just going to be of coughing course. the whole time. Yeah, of course. Like, oh, no. It's and that's like a shot. throat chakra thing, too. It's probably just yeah. the nerves of it all you're about ah, to be communicating yeah. in a whole new way. Yeah. So not Spasming. that you have a weakness there, but just that it's, yeah. of course, your throat is just opening maybe. You yeah, know? yeah. We get the same symptoms when we're opening something up as when we're closed off because it's kind of like mm. retracing. So yeah, it was yeah. a good thing. Well, I let it out, so <laughs> exactly. thanks thanks to that herbal tussin. But your product line, and I, and I, I bring this up because people need to know mm -hmm. that not all products are created equal. Absolutely. You can't just go to Costco, Target, Walgreens, please don't sue me. You can't go to all those and just go. How many times are we going to say, please I don't know, sue me? Should we take a <laughs> shot of something? <laughs> please. How about like rose water or something? Something. <laughs> um, but it, they're not created equal. No. I remember years ago, they did this investigation that found that there was such a small amount of real herb, mm -hmm. like 4% and yeah. lower in yep. things like Target, CVS, Walmart. Um, so one, you are making sure that you have quality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? And yeah. two, you're and doing- potency. Potency. Yep. And due diligence. Yes. Please tell me Absolutely. and everyone else about this. Absolutely. So I wish I had my little mood juice here. But so in terms of potency, um, a good thing about why I love- well, I mean, I love all types of supplements, capsules or tinctures, but I'm loving the tinctures because we're able to write directly on the supplement facts, the potency, like the, the actual herb strength ratio. Mm -hmm. So most of our products are either one to two, one to 2.7. I always try to aim for a 1.1, but that's not always possible, but that means the uh, menstruum to mark ratio. So the mm -hmm. menstruum is like the alcohol or the glycerin that the herbs are soaked in. And then the mark is the actual herbal raw material. So having like a, anywhere from like a one to three or lower is an extremely potent tincture liquid product. Mm -hmm. So I would always look for that. And that's something I strive for in the company. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of uh, cleanliness of the actual herbs and making sure that they are what you think they are, that's something that my chemist really helped me out with when I first started manufacturing. First of all, actually, let's take it even farther back when I just had the concept of wanting to mass produce yeah. my formulas. We had called around to a bunch of different supplement manufacturers in the States because I always wanted to keep everything in the U.S. And they would say, okay, um, you know, we have your formula here. It's going to take about 12 weeks for a turnaround time. And we're like, 12 weeks? And my friend who lives in Canada, he has some history in the food production industry. And he's like, no, 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 that sounds like China. That sounds like they're sending your herbs yeah. to China to be manufactured, but they have this whole factory as a front, or maybe they are producing some things in their factory. Yeah. But for, for just a new customer or someone who's doing a low order quantity, they're going to send your stuff to China, pack it there, send it back and say, oh, it's done. But then you're getting, your herbs are being shipped overseas, so they're being irradiated, mm -hmm. which is why I didn't want to bring a lot of my mm -hmm. stuff here because I didn't yeah. want them to all yeah, get irradiated. It, yeah. But, um, it, you know, you're, you're losing out on all of the, the active nature of the actual plant medicine. Mm -hmm. So he had called the company for me and said, can you put in writing that you're not going to be sending our stuff to China? They didn't want to do that, and they did said, they? Um, well, and we're like, okay, bye, got to go. Yeah. So when we first started um, doing the, the Parasite Cleanse, we actually manufactured it in Canada because he had people there that he knew would produce it in North America and not send it overseas. Mm -hmm. 
Then I've met my chemist actually at Expo West, which is why I love it so much. Yeah. And he taught me that with a lot of herbs, you'll get, let's say you're ordering two pounds of bulk turmeric powder and you want to encapsulate it or whatever, you want to tincture it. A lot of the times that powder that you're getting, another company has already extracted the active phytochemicals such as curcumin, which is the big one that we want from turmeric. They'll extract it, put it in some, you know, extra strength curcumin complex product that they're selling for four times the amount that you could sell just a whole plant turmeric yeah. powder. Yeah. And then they're still selling you the turmeric powder, but they don't have to disclose that they modified it whatsoever. So my chemist started doing gas chromatography testing on all of our bulk herbs and powders before we tincture them, before we encapsulate them, to make sure that the active phytochemicals, at least the ones that we know of, because there's many phytochemicals in plants that science is just not aware of, mm -hmm. but at least the major ones that we know of, like the curcumin and yeah, turmeric, yeah, yeah. are actually present in the herb powder that we're getting. And we've had some samples where they're not, and we've had to toss it or compost it or whatever. But there's plenty of times where it really does happen. So me as a consumer, I know that now as a, as a you know, the owner of a company, but me as a consumer, I never That's knew it. that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when we're ordering these herbs on Amazon in bulk and these packets, you have no idea yeah. what you're getting or what's in them or who changed them. So I think that the gas chromatography piece is really what part of what makes our product stand out for sure. And then the other piece is that we always test the herbs, whether they're organic from a farmer that we've been buying from for three years, or whether they're wild crafted from soil that was untouched by humans, which I always prefer. Yeah. But the problem there is that you don't know what's in the soil. So mm -hmm. we also test the raw bulk herbs for microbes, heavy metals, mold, everything that you can think of will always test. And we have plenty of times where they fail. Yeah, Again. yeah, is that right? Lead is a big one. We're always getting lead, especially even if it's a, you know, we do use some Chinese herbs in our products, which mm -hmm. are always difficult because we have some good wild crafted suppliers. But again, it's just the soil in China, a lot of the times has just, there's runoff or yeah. it was used for a, an industry 50 years ago and yeah. now it just looks like farmland, but there was something there beforehand. Yeah. You just never know. It's really hard. It's really hard. Yeah. So we, we will always scrap it if it tests wrong or even if it's just a little bit over, we always just have to start new, which is why sometimes my products have a wait time when they're sold out. So people are not always happy about that, but I've explained to them this is for all of our best interests because yeah. I'm not going to take something that's not clean and I'm not going to give it to you. Yeah. If you're a company at Walmart, you're just shooting them out, yeah. right? Because it's, yeah. it's never not going out of, out of sale, right? Exactly. And that's because right? These companies aren't doing their due diligence mm -hmm. to, to completely look with transparency yes. at what they're putting in the public. Yes. So I, a, a big reason I want to talk about that is because we want to know how to shop. Yes. And um, a, a while ago, back when I was first in practice, I told this patient to get this supplement mm -hmm. and get it on this site. Yeah. And no other site. Yeah. She's like, well, it's cheaper on Amazon. Why, why don't I just get it on Amazon? It's $10 cheaper, yeah. $15 cheaper. She comes in and I compared the two. Yeah. Not only were the capsules different, mm -hmm. but the packaging was different. Yes. The, the counterfeit industry in supplements is real. It's, it's a real. $6 billion industry. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. Right? So it's it's disheartening because people want to do better for themselves. Yes. And then but then just, they also want to save money. So of course you're going to shop around and find it from the best source, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's it's more worth it to go to the site where you might not get free prime shipping or you might not get whatever. You have to spend 100 for a minimum, but yeah. you know that it's from a company who really cares. Yeah. That's always, always going to be worth it. And another thing um, to mention, it's funny because my product Mood Juice, which is our current bestseller, which is technically for you know anxiety and depression. We, we're not supposed to make claims, but that's just the best way that I can describe it. It's for low mood and low motivation. Um is we have St. John's Word in there. And I myself took St. John's Word years ago from like a CVS brand mm -hmm. before I knew anything. Mm -hmm. And I felt nothing from it. And I've had a lot of people who've told me the same, you know, I've, I've tried St. John's, it doesn't work. Yeah. It's not doing anything. And I'm like, yeah, me too. So I was almost hesitant to use it in my formula, but my teachers encouraged me. Like this is a really important solar herb that brings the light into the dark places mm -hmm. of the psyche. Mm -hmm. And I've always loved that. And it's that nice, bright yellow flower. And I wanted the mood juice formula to be really bright. So um, 
what I realized is that with St. John's wort, you have to harvest it in July when it's at its peak opening, when it's soaking up all that sun. Mm-hmm. You have to harvest it just at that point. And we recently had to go and order herbs for another batch of mood juice. And our farmer said, I'm sorry, I don't have any left from last July and I'm not going to harvest it now yeah, or get another source. Yeah. We're going to have to wait until next July. Oh. So that's when we had to move to our wild crafted supplier instead of our organic farmer because mm-hmm. he was out. So I think a lot of these companies, the Walmarts, the CVSs, all that stuff, they're not... They don't know when to harvest. They're not, you know, they didn't go to herbalism school where people yeah. are like, respect the plants. Yeah, this yeah, is the yeah, harvest yeah. season. So they're probably just picking it whenever or they're picking the wrong parts or yeah. whatever it is. And then people aren't getting the results from the product because it wasn't made with care and it wasn't made with knowledge of the plant medicine. Yeah. Like they found that there was oregano instead of ginseng in some of these capsules. <laughs> like, so that even, oh my God. we're just overestimating uh-huh. that. Like, I think a lot of it is just like, we don't really care. You know, yeah. we're making a quick profit and putting it out there and now people are buying it, mm-hmm. which is true. People come to me and they'd be like, oh, I don't know. Like, kava never really works for me. And I was like, oh, it didn't work? Have you ever tried kava? <laughs> Yo, kava. Because it, it'll, it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> um, a, a funny, funny story. It, we're both from the East Coast, actually. Yeah. She's a fellow New Yorker. Yeah. <laughs> this is, if you feel, listen, how about this? From Yonkers. New Yorkers, she's from Yonkers. Yonkers, Westchester. Yeah, I was... <laughs> Are you from Westchester? Westchester. I, I, I was born in Queens, but um, we're both also Leos. So we yes. have that Leo fire energy. Mm-hmm. So That pitta. That pitta energy. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh, so coming from the East Coast, we don't have kava bars. I didn't no. have, I didn't know any where I was <laughs> from. Don't. So I come to the Bay Area and in San Francisco, there's two. Mm-hmm. And my friend's like, you know, you don't really drink. I don't really drink that much. Yeah, Once either. every few months. And I'm like, yeah, let's go to Nightlife Kava Bar. Uh-huh. I go there and I tried Polynesian Kava, Ooh, right? And it comes beans. out in this wooden bowl and uh-huh. they made me do this chant. And I was like, all right. And I drank it, whoosh, tidal wave. My mouth oh. was numb, my oh, throat yeah. was numb. And I was like, And that's Whoa. the doctrine of signature of the plant. That's how you know it works. Yeah. Because what it's doing with the numbing here is giving you a taste of what it's doing to the nervous system and the muscles. Yeah, yeah. So every plant has that doctrine of signatures, whether it's in the first feel or whether it's in how it looks or mm. whatever. It's it's That's how you know it's good kava. <laughs> oh, that was good kava. I was the most relaxed I've ever been. I swear, I pretty much ever. Where was this like all before my midterm exams or final or board right. exams? Like that, the kava is, and that's in your... That's in peace juice and mood juice. And we got a lot of questions too um, about, because there's a, you know, the FDA is always messing with herbs and even herbs that have been used traditionally for so long and in very safe formulations and everything like that. There are some liver warnings about kava. And unfortunately, that's just a bad rep that kava has gotten because if you actually look at the cases of what happened with those three people who had liver complications from kava, one of the products, uh, the kava, the uh, kava lactones, mm-hmm. which is something that we test for in the yeah. gas chromatography, the kava lactones were concentrated, you know, 60 to 100 times of what they've been, would be in nature because mm-hmm. it was a standardized extract, which my teachers, they hate. They always like whole plant medicine. Yeah. Another one, they tinctured the stems. Mm-hmm. You, don't, you don't use the stems of kava root. That's, that's where toxins are mm-hmm. concentrated. Of course you don't do that. And another one, the person was on an already hepatoxic medication. Yeah. So when you take those into account and you actually look at the plant being used in formulation or safely in the proper dosages and the right setting, and you're using the actual right parts of the plant, the risk goes down to almost nothing. Um, and even Germany had reversed their ban that they made on kava and the U.S. didn't find enough information to ban it. Yeah. But it's just interesting to know things like that, how, how much we don't really understand. We just demonize a plant because one or two people. I wrote a whole post on Kava and the, the truth behind those cases. Oh, good. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I didn't I, know you I, did I that. I talked all about it back when I first started. Oh, awesome. Okay. Because I was like, no, people, like, this is amazing. It's For a people medicine. with severe anxiety oh my God. or panic attacks, I say have it in your purse yeah. or in your pocket, that's whatever it may be. That's why it's in the juice. Yeah. And, put, and, and um, that's, that's really... I love that you brought that up and and talked about that because it's so important. Really crazy is this, doctrine of signatures. Yes. All my favorite things. The way plants really kind of like communicate with us. us. Yeah, like how they talk to us. Yeah. Um, How do you think back when we were so in touch with nature, right? No phones laying down, looking at it. Don't you think that we had such better, closer bonds with these plants through these signatures, right? Of course. Like the innate intelligence. 
is it, are, are you fascinated by that? Because it's just... I am forever fascinated by that because it's like, okay, how did someone know? Let me not eat that plant. Let me use this for this. Like, how did we even discover these traditional uses? That's what we I'm had to at. have a connection to them. Yeah. And w- again, my teacher Richard always says to us, sometimes the medicine that somebody needs is just sitting with the plant. You yeah. don't need to be taking a tincture 85 times a day of it. Sometimes yeah. you just need to sit next to it and feel it yeah. and get a message from it. And that's enough for you. So, um, yeah, I think that when we didn't have the distractions and we weren't plugged into all this technology that you can plug into other things, you yeah. can plug into to frequencies that maybe aren't as strong as EMF, but they're still there. And you, you get just these ideas in your mind of, oh, maybe it's used for this. Oh, you know, the leaf kind of looks like this. So let me try it for this. Like passion flower, for example, it has these tendrils Beautiful. that are really, you know, like tightly looped tendrils. Yeah, yeah. And my favorite use of passion flower is for circular thinking, looping yeah. thoughts. And it's it's the most beautiful thing to see that that's displayed. The plant is showing you this is how you use me. If you listen. If you listen. If you and listen. if you're a little creative about what could that mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> you might not always be yeah, right. But that's your intuition talking, right? Yes. These yes. Are, oh. It's a, it's a dance. You need the intuition. They need to show you the clue, oh, and oh. it has to connect. Yeah, we just lost the whole like evidence based audience on that one. They're oh, just sorry, like, guys. Oh, so this study said no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no studies on tendrils in passion flower. I'm sorry. But But what's nice is that it complements the science. Yeah. Never one without the other. I think when I started all of this, because I was just so scorned by Western medicine and was so failed by the doctors that I trusted and like, you know, my family doctor growing up just didn't listen to any of my concerns and I was so lost that I kind of wrote off all of Western medicine for a while and was like, I don't even want to deal with it. I don't want to sift through these studies. I don't care what they're saying. There's tradition and that's what I care about. What actually works? Who will listen? And now I'm really glad that it's been some time and I've grown up a little bit because now I understand how beautifully the two can work together. And having those studies to back it up but also having that that folklore and that knowledge and ancient knowledge. Yeah, it's just it's such a nice marriage and it helps everyone to feel more comfortable because you have the experience and then you have the proof. Yeah. So it's just that that this is what we should be bringing to the people and why I love that like you said that we complement each yeah. other because sometimes you got the science, sometimes I do, sometimes you have the yeah. spirituality, sometimes I do. So it it both needs to be present to heal. One one thing that blew me away about being Thank you for that. That was really good. The one thing that blew me away about being in nature and connected to it is the power of like plant medicine in Peru and Ecuador, like ayahuasca. How the heck did they know to just take those vines and just utilize that for like the deepest, like transformative, transcendent cleansing of who you are? Who? How? Who, who walked past and goes, oh, well, here we go. This is what what we're going to pick off and we're going to change your life with this. Mm -hmm. So it's the power of like, being connected to nature and having that intuition saying, Mm -hmm. this is something we need to pay attention to because plants talk. Yes. And it even could be as simple since now we're in the modern world and we're not living in a jungle where we can just pick a plant or whatever. It's even, I feel like it's if you hear a a plant's name several times in a day or a week, or you just, you see this plant or you smell this plant or you taste it and it just, you feel that you need it. You feel that your body craves it. That's our modern day intuition of knowing what plant medicine is correct for us. We all resonate with a certain flavor that we need of an herb. Like Mm -hmm. the people like Nick who need the tonics, they really love those sweet herbs. Where like me who needs the bitters for my liver and limb system, I love those bitter herbs. So you you can know so much about what's right for you and, and being your own healer by just paying attention to what feels right or what keeps coming up or those synchronicities about the plant. They're there. Yeah. You just got to open your eyes. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's, we're always getting that intuition, things talking to us. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, we're so distracted. Yes. So take time. Put your phone down, right? Pay attention to all these things that are coming into your life. Or pay attention to those those signals that you get, right? Mm-hmm. Like, or, dreams. or dreams. Dreams are my favorite. Before I had started herbalism school, I had this dream where um, an old man had brought to me these, these like twigs. Mm-hmm. And he opened his hands. There was these two twigs and there were these flowers with them. And he said, you need some chicory root. And I had never worked with chicory root. I had only heard of it as like the coffee replacement. So I had yeah. never worked with it as a medicine. And... You know, I had, I bought some, I tried it. I didn't really feel anything. I'm like, "Hmm, I don't know. Like, what is this trying to tell me? So I kind of put it on the back burner for years. And then I started my herbalism school and we started talking about flower essences because he said chicory root, but there were flowers in his hand. So I never understood what the flowers meant. So 
then I go to herbalism school. We learn about the flower essences. We learn that they're an energetic re remedy. They act on the emotional body rather than the physical body. And I found out about chicory flower essence, the chicory mm -hmm. root flower, the, the flower of yeah. chicory root. And the essence was for helping the people you love, helping to let go of the people that you love and not be so controlling and momming towards them and letting them live their own paths and their own lives without your control yeah. or intervention. And that's something that I have always struggled with, just you know, wanting to fix everything, wanting to caretake for everyone. And that flower essence helped me so much and I finally understood what the dream meant. So even if it's something that you realize three years later, you still got that message and you're just waiting for that other puzzle piece to put it together. Yeah. 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 Wow. Isn't it crazy how subconsciously, energetically, we're getting all these messages every day <laughs> to better ourselves. Every single day. The universe is like, just do <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. Don't do this. Yeah, and yeah. we're like, I and think we're like, I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do this. And you just walk into a wall. You're like, oh, well. Which is why know? I probably sprained my foot. I was probably doing the wrong thing. I, I was thinking that. It's like I was going on the wrong path a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, like a, maybe I wasn't supposed to do what I was supposed to do that night. Yeah. And I ended up not, so. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. I'm glad that this path ended up with you being here. Exactly. Right? Because exactly. we are educating. Yes. I want to bring up something. This is a crazy story. And remember when you told me the story yesterday, I got chills. The power of EMFs and what happened to uh, mm. you and Nick yeah. when you were on vacation. Yes. So we were on vacation in a remote area of Dominican Republic. It's a town called Cabrera. And we had this really beautiful eco villa that was, you know, uh, wind powered and solar powered. And at night there were no lights. There were just these really orangey red little lights around the house so that your circadian rhythm was helped. Like it was Amazing. an oasis. And what was nice about it is that there was no Wi-Fi. But there was one night where I did need to get a little work done, had to send some emails. So we called the, the Airbnb host and they said, oh, we have a little satellite Wi-Fi device that you can turn on. It'll work by satellite, um, but it's just not the fastest. And I figured this is probably some heavy duty stuff if it's like a satellite Wi-Fi. This isn't your average router. So we're like, okay, we'll try. <laughs> so we turned the Wi-Fi on, we couldn't really get it to work. And we ended up having to go out and get some food. So I just left the little satellite thing um, upstairs in our bedroom and I left it on by accident because it wasn't even working anyway. So we left, we came back home. And when we came home, there were just dead bugs all around the satellite Wi-Fi device. Mm -hmm. Just all like as if they hit a wall and just dropped dead. It was the scariest thing. It looked like the freaking uh, plague. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. Just a line of bugs everywhere. Just, just everywhere, just all around where Whoa. the satellite was. So it was just freaky. And I'm like, okay, we're not using this satellite anymore. And then I started looking up all these things about Wi-Fi. And I found what Ali was talking about, the Dr. Klinghart study about mm -hmm. the mold being able to multiply itself in the presence of EMF. And yeah. I had always felt that way. Like I, when I was living in the moldy apartment and I would be near the Wi-Fi router, I would get so tingly and weird and I would just feel the Wi-Fi. It was like I was conducting that frequency better. Mm -hmm. And I have some like, you know, theories, some, some non evidence based theories yeah, yeah, <laughs> about yeah. when we are, you know, like playing host to certain organisms that are draining our energy and are lowering our vibration that we're better at conducting those lower vibrations like EMF mm -hmm. or like sadness or whatever it is. Cause it's resonating. Yeah. Same with heavy metals. You know, you, we're, we're conductors. The hair is an antenna. We are an antenna. Even with cats, like their whiskers are their antennas. We're, we're sensing energy at all times. So if you have a lot of heavy metals in your system, the energy that you're conducting through your antenna is going to be a lower vibration energy than mm -hmm. if you're filled with minerals, which are on the other side of the mm -hmm. spectrum, and then you're conducting the high frequency. Supercharged. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I think it's, I'm so glad that you do the heavy metal testing and you're so, you know, do the hair tests and everything because mm -hmm. that's so important as to our emotional state and what we are picking up through our sensors. Yeah. We're energetic beings. Yes. I, I think we, even in medicine, tend to just stay in the materialistic and being like, we're going to treat the body and matter yeah. and matter and matter and not understanding the the beauty behind how intricate we are yes. as a whole yes. and how connected we are and how things that are energetically disruptive can affect us. Mm hmm like Wi-Fi. Like Wi-Fi or like people. Like people, right? <laughs> and it goes back to intuition. You're like, oh, I don't know. Every time I just hang out with this person, I'm drained and I'm a... Yep. 
hello, you know, like there's something intuitively that's saying that person's not raising that vibration. Your exactly. Own vibration. Or their, their vibration is so low that then they're, they're taken on yours. It's like a, a seesaw, you know, whoever's higher is going to fill the cup of the other. Yeah. So, you know, it's, there was this one time where, um, I had hugged this guy and he, he just is not the highest vibration person. Yeah. I, I like him and everything, but just, I could feel that there was just, you know, something there. I hugged him and it, I could physically feel the energy come from my toes out of my head into him and I just fainted. Just, Did you? Just instantly. And I'm like outside of his office on the ground. Like my friend Asia who's over there was like, oh my God, is she okay? They're bringing me peppermint oil. They're trying to like bring me back to life. But it was instant as soon as we embraced. It was like, oh, energy really? vampire. And that's the only time it has ever happened to me. But that was all I needed to see to know it's real. <laughs> Oh, I, I believe it's real. I felt yeah. it, but that's how sensitive are you that you felt that transition happen? Yeah, that's that, that's something crazy. I, I don't I've think never that. felt that before, and yeah. I haven't felt it since. So I don't know if I was just particularly sensitive that day, or I don't know. I have theories about that too. I think when people are kidney yang deficient or like kidney deficient in general, since that's our jing and that's like our seat of the chi, mm -hmm. that really like we we want to suck other people's kidney energy. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Yeah. Freaky stuff. <laughs> how, and how good does it feel when you're with high vibration people? Because oh, yeah. you come out, you're buzzed, you feel like you want to change the world. Exactly. Right? And that those are the people you need to bring into your life. Yes. In every single way, friends, partners, mm -hmm. um, colleagues, whatever. Just having those people in your life yeah. is so important because we forget that. It's really just chasing that feeling of who and what makes you feel full. And so for me, like eating has always been something that I struggled with as a child, overeating, being overweight. And I can always tell if I'm around someone that's low vibration, when we leave, I want to eat. I w I'm ravenous. When I'm around people that are filling my cup, I feel physically full afterwards. Mm. And I don't, I want some tea or I want whatever. Like I don't, I don't need anything extra. Yeah. I don't need to like take the edge off or whatever. I, I'm just good. Oh. I'm good. So, yeah. I, but for me, eating is always my trigger. Like if I'm if I'm really hungry around someone, or I'm like <laughs> looking for something to do to get my energy back, you know, I think right, it's like a right, right, give right, me right, more right, right, energy yeah. kind of thing because it, it took it all away. Yeah, and we as really practitioners need to protect that, right? Yes. I've had patients, and unfortunately, a lot of cancer patients are really going through some stuff. You're wiped out. Yes. If you're sensitive to it, you're even more wiped out. Yep. So, anyone who's listening, who's practicing with people, working with people needs to at least come back to that and being like aware of where you are. Yeah. Is your cup being filled? Is it being drained? Mm -hmm. And then what are you doing to refill it? Yeah. Or to compensate for the stress. Yeah. Because yeah. you're just so off afterwards and you need, like I said, you need something to take the edge off. This is why I talk about the importance of carving out me time for yourself yes. to reflect, to re-energize your cup away from your phone, away from people yeah. and being like, oh, okay, I feel better now. Mm -hmm. Like what do I even feel? Yeah. Most people don't even give themselves time to feel what they're actually feeling. Yeah. And I want to go into that, but I wanted to mention that if you are someone, like you're saying, the cancer patients who's just very sensitive to other people's energy and you're already so depleted, a good way to protect that kidney chi is to wear all black because black is the color. I know. I know. It's like I'm thinking someone in your field and, and with me, it's like, wait, ah. I didn't even realize I'm wearing all black. <laughs> But it's it's something that we do subconsciously where it's like, oh, I'm more comfortable in all black or oh, it's slimming. But it's really a protective mechanism because that black is like a shield and really protects your energy. Mm -hmm. So that's something I always tell people. If you're going to be around difficult situations, all black, time to get your ninja on because it'll protect you. <laughs> you know, I, the thing I love about this show is that we can say we're going to talk about something and just go somewhere else. Hey, just have a, a fun conversation. It, but it's th that's what I want. I want people to intuitively speak about what they want um, because that's when there's the flow going. And, yes. and, I, and I love that we got into all of that. Yeah. Protecting ourselves and spirituality and vibration. And mm -hmm. so you are, when are you done with school? So I have, I, well, I, this year ends in May, like a regular school year. And then I have one more year. So I need to, I need to go home and do my homework, honestly, because <laughs> right now I'm working on all my like personal case studies on friends and family. Yeah. And then, um, you know, if I complete all of those, God willing, next year, um, I will be doing more of like actual clinic work because my school has their own clinic where we just see, you know, people that 
just find out about us or just need care at an affordable price. I think it's mm -hmm. like donation based. Mm -hmm. um, and all of our herbs that we prescribe people are all donated. So it's a really nice system for people who can't afford, you know, like a $400 first visit with someone. For sure. Yeah. So I'll be doing that. And then we get supervised by um, our teachers, like uh, the plan that we're creating for them. You know, they watch our intakes to see if we could ask something a little better or dig a little deeper somewhere. Um, the question that I always forget to ask during intakes is, uh, what's your favorite weather or what's your favorite season where you're most comfortable? Because mm. that question can tell you so much about someone's current energetic state mm -hmm. or their imbalance or whatever. Because if someone's like, oh, I... I just hate the heat. I hate the summer. I hate the humidity. Give me the dead of winter. They're, they got some damp heat going on, yeah. some phlegm, all that good stuff, and yeah. they need those cooling remedies. But if someone's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I, the winter is the worst part of the year for me. Yeah, That's me. same. Yeah, like it, I just tend towards the cold. So I need a lot of those warming remedies, a lot of the... Yeah the warming mushrooms, the, the adaptogens, even the ginseng. It's so hot, but I can handle it because I run so cold. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm taking ginger shots. Yeah. G ginseng every yes. day. All, I'm like, oh, this is this is good. I love some good ginseng. Whereas we were out to eat with Allie yesterday. Yeah. She's hot all the time. Is she really? Yeah, so she needs all the cooling stuff. Well, she's so pitta. Like, she's even more pitta than us. Like, we're, we're pitta, but, like, we're yeah. also, like, chill. Yeah, we're chill. Whereas Allie's like, I'm going to take over the world. I got yeah. these studies in yeah. my back pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do yeah, this. Exactly. She's like, let me put up a story and talk about this for 10 minutes right now. and just blow your mind. <laughs> exactly. I was like, whoa, that's fire coming out. There's yeah. fire coming out of her eyes, basically. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So I think, it, so you have how many formulas now on your... Ooh, I think we have 16. Whoa. 16, yeah, because we have our six juices, which are, I like to call them herbs for real life, because mm -hmm. the juices are more things that... You can absolutely take them every day if you love them. And I take several of them every day, the mood, brain, and liver. Mm -hmm. But you can also use them on an as-needed basis. They're not things that you have to be dependent on. You can use them as tools, as your herbal first aid kit. So on a day when you have a test, you break out the brain juice. Oh, yeah. On a day when you're really stressed and everything's going wrong and you sprained your foot, break out the mood juice. <laughs> on a day where, you know, you can't really get to sleep, you break out the sleep juice. So um, that's like my little apothecary of just making life smoother and yeah. easier. And then I have the immunity line, which is like the herbal tussin cough syrup that you had, the yeah. allergy tonic that you were kind enough to drop off to me last night mm -hmm. because poor Nick is going through this yeah, mystery through sickness stuff. and allergies. And the uh, mushrooms. Yeah, the immune shroom. I took those. Oh, love I, the I drank shroom. the elderberry way quicker than I should have. Uh, me too. And it's tasty. It's so good, yeah. and, and the elderberry doesn't have any sugar because I just hate picking up a bottle of elderberry and there's agave in it. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why would you give me sugar when yeah, I'm yeah. fighting something? Yeah, yeah. No. Full, yeah. So I, I'm a huge fan of vegetable glycerin just because it's such a wonderful medium in which to infuse herbs, um, especially for people who are sensitive to alcohol. And it also has a really nice sweet flavor. So even with something it as tastes, tart as elderberry, yes, yes. still I, good. The kava, I mean, kava's strong. The kava, I remember we just took it before this. Yeah, and I the go, mood juice. I go, there's kava in here? I go, I can't taste it. Yeah. Because there's that. And the best thing is you can give those to kids now. Exactly. Right? Yeah, the immunity line you can give to kids. So the cough syrup, the allergy tonic is really great for kids with asthma too. We have had a lot of success with that. Um, and then the, what is our, our elderberry you can give to kids. And we had one more, oh, the sore throat spray. Mm. Those are all our kids safe. And then immune shroom is also kid safe. You just open up the capsules. You can put half in some juice. Yeah. Our probiotic is kid safe. Again, you open up the capsule, put half in something or even a fourth if they're younger. Um, and we're working on actually a, a whole kids line. That's what so, I was going to say. What are you working on? You, you got the kids line I coming. I got the kids line coming and I, I'm like, you know, I'm hoping this works out. But what I really want to do, it's so funny that we had a conversation about minerals last night because my huge goal with one of the formulas in the kids line is to create a plant-based mineral tincture for kids who don't get enough vegetables, oh. where it's just all these mineral rich plants that yeah. are tinctured. And yeah. we got some nettle in there. We got some oat straw. We yeah. got some, you know, a uh, horsetail yeah. for the silica. Like oh, yeah. just getting all these mineral rich plants, making it into a really delicious tincture with the glycerin so that kids totally love it and it's sweet and they want to eat it up. Mm -hmm. And then your kids can have that extra boost of minerals, which is going to help with everything from energy to brain function, ADHD, yeah. just everything. You know the importance of minerals. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. Thanks. I, I, I fully support all companies. This Half this show is talking about products. Yeah. Um, um, companies that are doing it right, that are putting it out there for people to to be safe and with a lot of value and can, and can work. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. The, if it doesn't work, then what's what are we doing here? You know, like it's got to it's got to be potent. It's got to be effective, but it also has to be safe and gentle. And like you said, the education piece is so important, especially even talking about you know, people who are low dose versus high dose people. Yeah. Like we said, not every herb is going to work for everyone and not every dose is going to work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So what, part of what I love about what I do is getting to educate people on yeah. things like that. You know, if you're someone who's really sensitive to pharmaceutical medications that you've taken in the past, you're going to be way lower dose with herbs too. So you're going to start with half a dropper. But if you're someone who's like, no, I need to take like six ibuprofen to feel it, then you're probably going to need a little more mood juice than other people. So I feel like that's you. <laughs> Um, no, I'm actually more on the sensitive end. Oh yeah. I am. Yeah. Just be, I guess, cause I've just had all these health issues throughout my life. So yeah. my body's just like, can we, can we go slow? Yeah. No, I'm like, I'll take six. You know? Well, well, okay. There, there's a difference between being sensitive and then me running self experiments oh, okay. where I do take six of everything. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause I just need to know how it works at full strength. Yeah. You know, like what does it do to me at this dose? I, so I, I can know what it does to people at regular dose. At borderline toxicity. Yeah, exactly. Which, I'll be fine. I'll, I'll be good. My liver will recover. Well, we got good liver. We take care of them. Okay. Okay. So before we wrap things up, I want to ask you, I always ask people this. Okay. What are three things? We need to have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Three things that listeners and viewers today can go, all right, I'm writing this down. I'm doing it as of now. Okay. That are meaningful, valuable to you that you want to share. Ooh. Number one would have to be um, having a ritual in your life or several rituals in your life. Um, yes, because so the rose, like as I keep talking about my rose medicine, that's a ritual that I've brought in, um, that a, I share with others. So I share with my boyfriend and my best friend and we have our little rose ceremonies together and it just totally changes the vibration of the room and helps us to deepen our connection and just have this giddy laughing night. So having rituals that you share with friends and family to bring you guys closer and then also having your own rituals that bring you back to yourself. Cool. Yeah. Um, because I don't, I like the word routine, but I like the word ritual better. It just makes it more special mm -hmm. and, and routine is the key to life and the key to mental health. But when you make it this special, special, personal, almost sensual ritual with yourself, yeah. especially when it involves self touch or self massage mm -hmm. or some kind of self care, um, it, it just, it fills that void that I think so many of us have because of whatever reason, because of trauma that's happened in our lives yeah. or whatever it is that's gnawing at you on the inside that you're still working through. And the reason we're all doing this beautiful work, bringing in those rituals just makes it so much easier to go on and to have these, these wonderful days. So one ritual that I really love is doing gua sha facial massage. With I just the, did this with the, Oh yeah. That's they're the part best. of my morning rituals. Again, going back to eating, like I've always been someone who struggles with overeating, especially when I'm stressed or around people that are depleting me. And if I sit there with the gua sha stones and do a full massage and just touch myself and really like give myself the attention that I'm craving through that touch, yeah. I don't want to eat anything. I'm so happy. And mm -hmm. it's something that's so like romantic for myself. And like, that's what self care should be. You know, it's not always like our $6 matcha lattes that we keep buying from Erewhon. Right, right, right. That's it's, part of self care. It's part of it, but it's also just like touching yourself, just yeah. giving yourself a little leg massage yeah, 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 or like, yeah. how am I? Or just sitting there and writing in a journal. That could be your ritual yeah. or whatever, just taking five minutes or 30 seconds even to just meditate in silence. You'd be amazed at how much 30 seconds can make a difference. Yeah. yeah. Breathe so, for 10 seconds and yes. see how your day changes, you know? And see that you were holding your breath before that. I'm holding it right now. So, so I do it all the time. <laughs> even yeah. in exercise, my trainer is like, you know that you hold your breath Isn't during exercises? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm panting. He's like, that's why you're panting because you didn't breathe and now your body's uh, grasping for air. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So ritual, whether it's with your loved one, with your partner, yeah. with yourself, just, just bringing ritual and intention and mindfulness into everything that you do. Even just making a pot of tea and like watching as the herbs infuse or watching as the jasmine pearls Being open. present. Yes. At the end of the day, it's being present, doing yes. the gua sha, being yeah. present, rubbing your leg, being mm -hmm. present, speaking gratitude, speaking affirmations, yeah. whatever it is, just now moment type Being stuff. present wherever you are just deepens the value of every single thing you do. Even if it's you being present through a horrible situation, at least you were there and not halfway somewhere else yeah. and you were able to get through it. And integrate it once you're done yeah. in a healthier way. Yes. 
Wow. Okay. So that was one. That could have been so one, two, and three. One. <laughs> what else? What else matters um, to you? Number two. I, I guess this is more something that's just tangible and and something they could incorporate as a ritual or just as a part of their health routine. Um, since we're on the topic of minerals last night and just touched on it with the frequency, um, doing some nourishing overnight infusions of herbs. It's probably the easiest way that someone can just start to dabble into herbal medicine, and it's something that's purely um, nutritive. It's not like you're using herbs that are antimicrobial or liver cleansing yeah. or whatever, you're using herbs like nettle or like oat straw mm -hmm. that are very, very mineral rich and have all these, you know, electrical <laughs> things that mm -hmm. we need to function properly. And you make an overnight infusion by packing a mason jar, maybe this way full with some plant matter. You want to use a good amount of it because it's basically like eating a salad, right? right. You're, you're drinking a salad instead right. of eating the leaves. Right. So you're gonna fill it up this way, it's like a big mason jar. You boil some water, fill it with the boiling water, cap it, leave it on the counter overnight because you need both time and heat to break open the cell walls and extract the minerals. And then the next morning you wake up, it's ready for you, you you know, yeah. you, what is that called, open the cap? Yeah, open the cap, <laughs> mold brain. <laughs> right, yeah, mold right. brain from the freaking Airbnb. <laughs> um, so you open the cap, you can either reheat it or just drink it yeah. at room temperature as is. But that is like the most valuable mineral supplement you could ever take. Yeah. And you're making it yourself in your kitchen with the blend of herbs that you want. And you're doing this as a service to yourself. And it's the most beautiful way to just start connecting with the plants. Where, and, do, where do we get the herbs? Um, <laughs> that's a good one. So... <laughs> I like to go in person because I like to A, support small businesses, and B, you can ask them, where did you get these? What city is this from? So I go to Flower Power in New York City on mm -hmm. East 9th Street, um, but you can try to find like a lo local herbal apothecary near you that carries like those jars on the wall of the bulb Yeah, herbs. yeah, and find out like where do you get them? Just vet, yeah. vet them as best as possible. Yeah, or you could just harvest your own nettle leaf. You know, there's mm -hmm. nettle grows everywhere. You could grow it in your backyard. It's it's something, obviously, it stings you. It's stinging nettle, so you yeah. want to harvest it at the right time with gloves. And, you know, yeah. once you cook the nettle, once you dry them in the sun, the stingers are no longer going to get you. Mm -hmm. um, but And then also once you boil it in your drink, you don't have to worry about the stingers. You yeah. just strain everything. But it's something that's very easy to grow. It's a weed, basically. Yeah. And weeds are the best medicine we have on this earth. They are the most misunderstood plants. Weeds are what's going to heal us all. They're here for a reason. Exactly. Like just how plantain leaf is growing all over the ground. Why do you think plantain leaf is growing around the sidewalk everywhere you go? Because we all have leaky gut and mm. plantain is one of the best gut healers sure. in the world. Yeah. It's so mucilaginous, so beautiful. Yeah. It's something that people don't realize. You could just go to New York City Park. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe the soil maybe is not, not the best. Maybe not New York. Maybe not New York City Park. You could go to a Virginia yeah, yeah, <laughs> park. Yeah, somewhere nice. And uh, and just harvest some plantain and make an infusion with plantain, and you're going to get a really nice mucilaginous there liquid and heal your leaky gut. Universe talks to us. Yes, yes. Chaparral, great cancer herb. That yeah. grows everywhere on the East Coast, too. Yeah. So it's like, why are these popping up in excess? Oh, because we need them more than ever. Can I just say one thing before you hit your third one? Because yeah. Oh, I, I'm any time to think, this. so please. <laughs> Um, there, there, there was, I think it was Vanuatu, maybe, uh, -huh. uh there was this cow with a tumor growth on its eye mm. and what the farmer found was that this cow had an affinity towards this. It was May apple. All oh, right. Oh my it's rubbing its eye on it, rubbing its eye, keep, keeps rubbing it. And the tumor was going down. So this farmer is like, what is going on? Contacts all these people. Well, basically what happened is this. The constituents which in it, uh, in the May apple, uh -huh. or it's also an eggplant actually, can be used for um, squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. This cow knew intuitively. And that's us if we can just get back to being cows. Exactly. <laughs> Can, can we not just be cows and like... Let's just go graze and see what happens. Yeah. Like, what are you drawn toward? What tastes good to you? What is like, oh, I kind of need that. I kind of like so, that. So yeah, they extracted this constituent, put it in a cream, and now they can use it for basal cell, squamous cell carcinoma, and it's taking away... That's the, like the Hoxie, growth. you know, the Hoxie, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. his horse he had cancer yeah. and they sent the horse out to pasture and they were like, sorry, they're just going to like, you know, kind of let him die a natural yeah. death out there. But the horse stayed close and he ate these weird weeds that yeah. were growing near the grass that all the other horses were feeding on. And the combination of weeds that that horse was eating, Hoxie was like, hmm, let me try to make a tincture out of that. Let me try to make a tea. Mm -hmm. He did that and that became his famous cancer formula. So something? we just need to listen to the animals and we need to get back in touch with our animal. 
Yeah. Our instincts. Yeah. Our, our intuition. Our and that brings me to my third point. Oh, what a segue. What a segue. <laughs> my third point is that if you want to get back into that intuition and you want to get back into that more animalistic or primal nature that we all have where we're connected to the earth, you have to get into your body. One way to do that, of course, is the breath and just the sitting there and being present in your body. But another way to do that is through exercise and through pushing your body. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this as a reminder to myself to keep myself committed and motivated because the past few months, I've finally brought in that exercise piece back into my life after recovering from mold. And the emotional healing that I've experienced just because the exercise is stirring up all of that stagnation that was buried inside of me is incredible. And, mm. and having to be in my body and use my muscles and mm -hmm. use that the, the most primal, the only thing that I have is right here. Having yeah. to use that to, to survive and to get me through these workouts and to, to make myself healthier has brought me so much more presence has helped me to just have all of these insights mentally that I didn't realize while I'm having the exercise, while I'm in my body. So, um, it, you know, in the health community and the spiritual community, we, we talk so much about the mental and about the herbs and about these things that we can do, but just getting into your physical body and challenging yourself and yeah. just doing something that's really freaking hard. Yeah can just send you into leaps and bounds of healing. Yeah. So yeah. that's my third. You can't have the, the mental without the physical. I love that one. Yeah. I will go to the gym today. Thank okay, you. Okay, cool. <laughs> I won't because I have a sprained foot. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for this high vibration conversation. Awesome. I know for a fact people are going to love this one. Me too. I, 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 I think do. it's some good stuff. Yeah. And your passion comes through so easily. Thank you. I do know that you will be an incredible, incredible practitioner. Thank you so much. When you graduate, you're going to help a lot of people. And I mean that truly, as from one practitioner to another, but really one vibration, one soul, you know? I see you. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> I recognize you. Of course. Well, being Leos, it's yeah. hard not to. Yeah, right? <laughs> we like, had that connection I'm, already. You walk in, I'm like, oh, that's a Leo over uh -huh, there. Uh-huh, okay. right there. The hair, yeah. got it. Yeah. Um, thank you. Wow, I really hope you enjoyed that interview. That was so good. Uh, one of my favorites, although every single interview I have here is one of my favorites. But we got really deep. We got high vibe. We explored the medical side. We explored the spiritual side. And I love the take-home stuff that we have from that interview. So um, I really hope you enjoyed this show. We have another good one next week. So many products, so many knowledge bombs. It's for the people. It's all love. It's all joy. So much love. And uh, I'll see you next week. <laughs>